The Illinois app is available now on Apple and Google Play Store. Download the app, get the latest news, stream our podcasts, watch interviews, and listen to Illinois Radio Live. Download the app right now. As always, we bring you guys some of the illest guests from around the city and globe. And today we got Portia King in the building. Yo, what up, what up, what up, what up? <laughs> Yo, she fresh from China. Fresh from China. Yeah, last night I was there and got back last night here. The time changed. The time changed. It was really too so she's still on today. Yeah. Yeah. She's still on today. Yeah. She got back today. <laughs> I'm looking at you like you need some sleep. Okay, well, that's what I said. I'm, I'm, I feel honored you came to kick with us because I'm fresh out for time to fly. I'm going to bed. Of course, <laughs> it was going. It was 13 going straight from here to Beijing, then five out or two and a half hours to where we were, and then we did it coming back two hours to Chengdu. We're there, we're there for about five hours, and then 14 hours back straight into Chicago. So. Yikes. That sounds like yeah. a lot of uh, yes. I, mean, I tried the timing Like okay If I stay up Watch the movies Read a book For this set of time Then this block of time I'm going to have to be asleep So when we land I'll wake up and feel like Kind of normal mm-hmm. okay. but, I mean, What did you yeah. enjoy most About China? Oh what did I enjoy most? Um, mainly talking to people I love talking to people And there were definitely Language barriers But It's kind of cool The things you can communicate On an international level Without using your words So, like, just the easiest thing, this one woman, we were leaving a restaurant, and we thought she was was trying to sell us us some flowers. So, we thought she was just trying to get some money. We like, I don't really want no flowers. But then she, like, pointed to the food, did this, and rubbed her stomach. Oh, she was Mm -hmm. hungry. So, she was hungry. Mm -hmm. So, it was, like, just looking at that from a... Yeah, like, I'm a... But then she ended up still giving us flowers. But she really just wanted the food. Well, I'm sure she was trying to sell the flowers for money, but she really just wanted food. Mm So, I'm a communications... Expert. Guru, media maven. Expert. So, like, I just love studying just small things like that. So, just the small things that you could still communicate on an international basis, just on small symbols that we do. Would you, so. so, would you say communication is, uh, you know, one of your skill sets? As far as like, that's something you've studied as a, I guess, yeah. growing up. Yeah, yeah. I um, I always, like I said, love to talk. Almost probably talk too much, <laughs> but um. I went to Mizzou, University of Missouri, and I studied communication and mass media and minored in sociology just because I like to, like, I just like to break down different setups so I could be at, I don't know, at a restaurant and, you know, people watch or yeah. sitting somewhere in a cafe I and people watch. watch. Hey, sociology like, was my issue yeah. in college. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. And you can just see how like, um, they arguing, but they're not saying nothing because they don't want to make a scene, but mm-hmm. they got into it right now. <laughs> and then, like, just looking at the way people communicate and how they can communicate more effectively, which can eliminate so much BS that could take place with the lack of communication. So yes. I really vibe with that kind of thing. But that was my favorite part in China. And the food was good. The food was really good. We were talking about it. But like a lot of people say don't eat food in China, but I guess it depends on where you go. Mm. But the food there was good and we That's only why took they recommendations. Tell you to go to China and not eat food. the food. Yeah. Well, people say some I have friends who went there for like study abroad and they said they ate KFC every day. Because it was the most... Because that's what they know. Natural, but it was the most natural thing. Like, the chicken over there, I guess, is a bit purer than our chicken over here. But then also, you, I wouldn't trust them little shops. But the place we were at, they had really nice restaurants. And we just took recommendations on where to go, and it was good. So, what... So. Okay, you say you didn't eat any of the chicken. Well, yeah, well, I'm on a fast right now. So, I'm not eating meat. Okay. But I ate seafood. I ate their seafood. It was pretty good. Oh, baby. Okay. Some seafood. Yeah, yeah I probably would have dived into the seafood. Like, <laughs> yeah. I would have dived right into it. <laughs> yeah. Right from the Pacific. Fresh yeah, off the was, Pacific. You got to eat all that. <laughs> I, I can't eat seafood, so I'm. I'm yeah, yeah we, we can never go to China. I, I, you like the people who's allergic. I feel yeah, like when you ask, when you die, you gotta ask born. God why He did that to you. When I'm you not gonna question that, man. <laughs> I mean, just I mean, if you already dead, then for <laughs> baby, when he's there, he can still just taste it. That's what can't I'm saying. Like, once you, yeah. like, once you die, I'd like, be like, all right, I'm already food up there. And don't say that because I'm so sad. This seafood is so boring. No, you probably get up there and eat He's soul food every day. Mama, you First of all, you know how many grandmas is right. in heaven? We definitely eat right. soul food. Can't nothing worse happen. You look, grandmas <laughs> don't start going to church till 50. What they was doing before First then. First of all, what? <laughs> oh, but they man. already grandmas when they in heaven, Jones. Look, I'm just saying. So, you know, I actually want to jump into, you know, media maven. Hey. What, what makes you a media maven? Man, so I am... Just multifaceted in everything media. So when I came out of school, I got an internship doing PR, so public relations. So for people who don't know what public relations is, it's basically 
say you own a business, you don't want to buy ads or pay for advertising because people don't pay attention to ads anymore. People don't avoid trying to see ads. So PR is basically very sneaky advertising to get your name to be known or be relevant. So working in that industry, I learned how to write press releases how to pitch media, how to talk to media, how to develop social media campaigns, and all these things on the back end. But simultaneously, the same month, I want to say, that I officially started my internship, I also got um, an opportunity to work with Revolt Television, so producing for them out of Chicago. So I did that for about four years, along with still doing full-time PR, marketing, event management, all that jazz. And I was having Media Maven because not only can I pitch to media, like I pitched y'all, but I can also be pitched by media. So I can see everything in a full cyclical view of the whole entire media game from the audience perspective, the audience perspective towards us, what's your image that you want to take towards them, and just be able to put together a whole entire package and Media Maven just falls in line with my whole little brand of things that I have going on. Who are some of your favorite Media Mavens? Oh, favorite Media Mavens? Ooh, let's see. Of course, Oprah, the GOAT. Gotta say Oprah. Um, I love Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, I like that answer. Yeah, that's a great Uh, answer. Terrence J is up there. Those I would probably say are my top three. Okay. Top three. No Nick Cannon? He deserves no, 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 but no. But I was applause. about to say, Nick Cannon deserves an applause. Yeah, just you know, this is Nick Nick I was yeah. about to say, Nick he got a lot of good <laughs> <those. laughs> You know, definitely applause to Nick, but he's multifaceted. Yeah. I applause him for so many things in addition to hosting, but he also has his yeah, he got wilding out. Yeah. Yeah. He's he got a lot he has of his the, um, ear. Headphones. headphones. Look like he got bulletproof vests now. Yeah, he he has so many he more got things going on. <laughs> right. the he probably got a lot of that coming out. <laughs> like it's just you you can applaud him on so many levels. The same as like, okay, I won't compare him. I won't drop any other names. But, but yeah. got you. He is definitely so super what, what talented. What influenced this this media? Maybe like where does it all start from? Ooh, how far back you want me to go? Go far back as far as you want to go. I want to know, know where, 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 like, where did it hit you? Like, like, where was the, where did the love come from? Man, so let's see. When I was 16 in high school, I was really active with the Rainbow Push Coalition with Jesse Jackson, so going on their college media tours. Um, so through just that connection, they nominated me for a program called African Connections. And what African Connections did was really dope. I don't think they're around anymore because they don't have the funding. But they would sponsor for kids from five to ten kids from Chicago, inner city, south and west side, to go to Ghana for two weeks. Mm. Hey, that's where my father's so, from. Hey, hey okay, now. a cry, a cry. But, hey, um, look, well, maybe not a cry. I was but, gonna say, look, I was born here in Chicago. So you be eating? You you know about food? Food? Of course, you I know, know about, about the food. I know about the food. Oh my god! I know about the food. Yeah, know about the food. I just need to know, learn more. No, no, I'm saying not food. Not food. Food is Nigeria. I'm talking about kenke. Um, the kenke is yeah. different. I'm going to have okay. to talk to Pops about the kenke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's going off into another direction. But I was over there for two weeks. Um, it was a fully, fully sponsored trip. My first time leaving the country. And just grace to be able to first time go to Africa of all places. So that entire trip was just a huge eye opener. Like mm-hmm. I feel like the main metaphor that I use when when I talk about that trip is if you're a kid growing up in Chicago, inner city Chicago, or just in America, period, it's like you're a fish in a tank, right? Mm-hmm. You're just swimming around in this bubble. It's like all the fish doing what fish do. And you don't really pay attention to much else. But then imagine the perception or perspective of leaving the fish tank. And then having an outside perspective, being able to look back at it or look back and see things that you might not have seen before. Mm -hmm. So, like, this might put a, like, date on my age or whatever. But when I came back from that trip, I just remember sitting in class and everybody's talking about the Flavor of Love finale that happened. And, like, all the stuff that happened. These new joys come out and all this stuff. And I was just completely changed. Like, don't none of that matter. Like, just looking at. Like, you you saw a bigger picture. You saw the bigger picture. Well, yeah, you just see the picture of, like, man, like. Media and we throughout the whole trip. Every other day, we were in a different city within the country. Traveled the whole entire country, and we would have these very long talks just about America and like what it means to be America, not only to Americans but outside of America. America. The perspective they have towards us, and the one thing that I took away from that whole trip was like, man, yo, 
the media controls everything, everything. Mm -hmm. literally everything. If you go back to just stereotypes of black people, we couldn't even perform as black people on black shows. They would have to do the blackface. Mm -hmm. So all of the different stereotypes that go along with not just us, but everybody, stereotypes come are communicated through the media. The media controls perspective of like, what you value, of like why people pay so much for their mics. The media controls the economy for the money people spend, the perspectives they have towards each other, the, the decisions they make, propaganda, the politics. So I just looked at it as, yo, the media is the most powerful force in the world. Because it yes, shapes it perspective, it shapes understanding, mm -hmm. it shapes who we are individually and as a whole. So I just wanted a piece of it. I mean, how, how do you? I'm yeah. sorry for coming. I know it's cool. no, I, that was, I just wanted a piece of it. And I just fell in love with the media based on that. I wanted to be able to tell the stories worth telling or shaping perspective from a true and authentic place versus being told what's what and creating what is. Like, so, hey, that's yeah. girl, you good. Right. No, <laughs> right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. But I was gonna <laughs> ask you, you know, uh, you know, what is your opinion on those certain media platforms that mm -hmm. misshape uh mm -hmm. a positive, you know, vision? Well, that goes into just like clickbait. Clickbait's everything. Clickbait is money. Like they um basically that and that goes in with just greed of wanting the attention to be on them. So those outlets, I don't necessarily vibe with that. So like one fortunate thing about my position when I was with Revolt was that um, like I was freelance. So they might tell me, scoop me on a story down here. And a lot of times we would scoop them on stories like, yo, this is happening. Do you want this interview? Do you want this? Okay, well, we already got it. Let's go with that. So one thing I pride myself in is that every interview I've ever done, I've never highlighted the negative. It's like... Because as you all know, it's all about relationships. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, I always would be very careful in how I worded things and try not to give them those, like, flashy negative headlines. Because I never really got TT like that to tear somebody. I never mm -hmm. got enough T to tear somebody down. Yeah. But who's to say I would even want that? So those outlets, I mean, they do it because it's money. They do it because they have to. Like, some reporters or some journalists they cover stories because they have to cover them and I've never had to cover a negative story. So, so I, it's have tough. A, I have a question for you then like mm -hmm. what would you do had you been in those situations where you would have been working with Revolt and you would have had to cover a very mm -hmm. tough story like how do you think that would affect just like how you are as a journalist or mm -hmm. as you know someone in media well yeah so that comes from just like one thing I noticed about Oprah and her interviews and Shout out to my, my my internship that turned into a job doing PR was with a woman named Robin Beeman. So I just want to shout her out. So mm -hmm. she did PR for the Oprah Network oh, okay. when they were in Chicago. And um, one thing that I learned from her and just by <laughs> watching Oprah's interviews is if you notice the key thing about interviewing is making people feel comfortable. Correct. Making them feel like, yo, it's not an interview. We're just it's having just a conversation. A mm -hmm. Yeah, we just chopping it up just to, about you. So don't be nervous. Like, we're just talking about you. So one thing that I've learned is just... It's always about, it's not what you ask, but it's how wow. you ask. Because mm -hmm. you could get, you could ask a million questions trying to get this one answer, but if you don't ask the right question, you're not going to get the answer you want. So it's just being very careful about how you word certain questions. So that's what I would do. I would just, one, make them feel comfortable. Like, yo, I'm not judging you. And then, of course, ask off camera sometimes. It's like, well, I mean, I, if I know I have to get this ask this question, I won't ask. But a lot of times, I'm cur cur being courteous, um, I'll just say, like, is there anything you don't want to talk about? Okay, cool. But if it's something I know I have to ask about, I'm not going to ask. I'm going to just put mm -hmm. together the most savviest way to ask the bluntest question. But where they can come out in a genuine way and respond to it. Like, they might not answer it, but you're, they're going to have to respond. Uh, in a somehow. Way. So, I mean, yeah. but before we actually get into the Maven Method, Mm -hmm. uh, you worked with a lot of brands. Yeah. What, I guess I would say, um, what are some of those, what's the pressure of working with a brand? Mm -hmm. Or some of the obstacles? Well, I've worked with each brand in a different way. So, like, Revolt was producing, writing, interviewing, and all that. Um, let's see, Twitter, I was mainly just brought in to do moderate. So, also moderate and host events. So, I moderated a panel with them. Bumble ambassador I was an ambassador so I would come up with creative ways to spread the mission of Bumble and the woman empowerment force behind it um, so it was always a variety of different ways and the question was how do I manage working with them like how do you manage certain obstacles you know oh, every yeah. brand have some oh, things yeah. you may not 
want to do, but mm -hmm. that's what they that's what they do. So how mm -hmm. do you, you know, manage going around some of those obstacles? You know, for mm -hmm. those that are interested yeah. in doing what you do, you know, I'm pretty sure they would like to hit these obstacles now so they can oh, work yeah. on perfecting their craft. Oh, yeah. Like, let's see. I'm trying to think of, hmm. Well, for one, I would say the best way to build an individual brand is to avoid working with brands who don't align with what you offer. Mm -hmm. Like, if we're not seeing eye to eye, like, oh, <laughs> you want me to wear that? Uh, uh, that don't really, I, like, it don't mesh with me. So I try to only work with brands who I feel I can benefit and they can benefit. And then that's where the merger, but that's where it makes sense to merge. But if it comes across as something like, man, this is a really good opportunity, but I don't really want, like how they posted that um, so-and-so, so-and-so did this like that. And it's like, I, okay, let me try to figure out the best way to answer this question. I've said no to certain things before okay. just based on like relationships. Of, like say I'm cool with the cast of this show and there's somebody on the cast of the show who we have a joint partner and that person wants me to interview them. Like, yeah, like interview them. Just highlight them on your platform. Let them get their side of the story out. I know I'm speaking very vague, but it's specific if you know the details. And I just had to say no to that because, like, no, I'm not going to highlight their story. Because <laughs> from what I see, they we not rocking with <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. And you got to go somewhere else. You're going to have to do something else with that. So it's just mainly being firm in who you are, your brand, but also making amends of being able to negotiate. You have to be able to negotiate. Like I said, if there's an opportunity where it's an amazing opportunity and you'll benefit from it far more than they'll benefit from having you, so you can't pass up on it, then I would say negotiate. Uh, yeah, I'm, going to, I'm here to do this, this, and this, but I will not do this. Mm. I cannot do that. Can we maybe come up with a creative way to make it not so, I don't know, aggressive or not so vulgar or just being able to stand firm and stand ground on what you won't do and be able to try to bridge a gap if they're open to it. I like that. I like that too. You know what? Let's yeah. get into a quick music break okay. and then we're going to jump back into things with Portia King. So uh, stay tuned right now. We got Natalie Orphelia with Lit featuring Coco, Coca. Coca Vango. I can't even get his that is a name right there. Coca Vango. Then we got Tory Lane's new joint with T Pain, Jerry Sprunger, Santa Favorite Girl, and we'll be right back with the home girl Porsche King. Make sure to check out the ill list playlist in which we provide you with the latest tracks we play live on our show. Head over to Spotify and search Illinois Radio to follow our playlist as well as follow our podcast. Now let's get back to the show. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Pretty Riot, and thanks so much for tuning in to Illinois Radio. We are here kicking it with the media maven, Miss Portia King. How you feeling? Hey, hey, hey. I'm good. Y'all woke me up. Good. Yeah. 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 I like they here. <laughs> hey, we glad we, we woke hey. you up because coming from China. I was going to say, right yeah. Like Man. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's a good sign yeah, coming from, you know, a, a media maven like yourself saying we woke you up. You know, we, that, that's good. Well, thank you. That's good. No coffee. I wanted hey. to know, like, you know, um... What's some of the things in media now that you would love to see change? Ooh, that's a good question, question like John. this. That's a good question. Ooh, one thing I would like to see change. Ooh, and media is such a big question. Like, my mind is really circling around, like, all sorts of media. I feel like you should give us three. Hmm? I feel like you could give us three. Three? Okay. Three. Oh yeah, can I do three? Yeah, you can do three. Yeah, because okay. I feel like one is hard. Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking you got radio, you got print, you got. <laughs> but, okay. but she read through everything. I already like took it. Matrix. I already <laughs> took it big. I'm like, then you got podcasts, and you got like, <laughs> man. So things I would like to see change, especially like if money wasn't a thing. I would like to see magazines come back. I agree. Like I would love to see, like yeah. for magazines to make a comeback, that's not going to happen. But I would love to ma have magazines make a comeback because I feel like you can't really, I just miss going to the store and picking up a magazine. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. magazine. That used yeah. to be lit. I, I used to collect those. Man, I, word up. Pull out the okay. posters. Like, I ain't that, that, was too, that was too girlish for me. <laughs> nah, I had so many Word Up magazines. Well, yeah. Every poster on my wall came from a Word Up magazine. See, look. With, that's with, what, with, see what I'm saying? Christmas yeah. lights around Okay. Yeah. Look, look, real cute. Man, me and my sister had Christmas lights on our wall. We had B2K and Lil Bow Wow. Well, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 That was source double XL. I couldn't yeah. write the Word Up. That wasn't for me. That wasn't for me. It was all their posters. They were like in sweaters and hugging. But, hey, I get it. I get it. Exactly. It was like this group. We have three more over there. But I would love to see magazines make a comeback. That's not going to happen. Let's see. Realistic. Um, let's see. I would like to. Hmm. 
I won't say make TV more accessible, but like because like I know you can watch it from your phone, but you have to literally download an app to watch certain shows. So you almost need an app for every single show. So I would like for TV to be more universal as opposed to being able to watch TV or being able to put a podcast on television, but that's not going to happen unless you do make it digital on your phone. Right. So, like, say you were to able to download, like, I don't know, like, make it where, like, this, like, this kind of event could happen on television, on broadcast television. So, like, oh, I have a podcast like and everything, too, so I would love to be yeah. able to just, oh. yeah, like, something we, like that. But we going to get into where, that, too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but, like, something like that and what we do to also be able to reach a broader audience beyond just, like, tune in at so-and-so, so-and-so dot com mm-hmm. or dot co or dot TV right. and all that. Like, make it more television. So, maybe I'm a, a lover of the, right now. Of the classics. Yeah, maybe mm-hmm. I'm, like, just, like, the old-school classic feel of, like, something beyond a TV screen, your phone, and an iPad. Yeah. yeah. So I just like being it. able to, like, watch certain things on television without having to get the right HDMI cord and the adapter to plug it in. Or and become a member of this app. Yeah. Right. Or, or that app. Yeah, yeah. pay this month. fee to watch this. But oh, yeah, the antenna. Right. Ex- exactly. Antenna. Like, well, maybe not the antenna. Timber. <laughs> 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 but, but I feel the vibe. I feel the vibe. I feel the vibe. I feel the vibe. I feel the vibe, though. That's the vibe. You got antennas now? Yeah, they, they got antennas. They got AD yes. antennas, you're right. <laughs> My mother got one. <laughs> <laughs> she got a good 27 channels. Hey. <laughs> yeah, because they changed over. But yeah. like, I would like to change that in media. And then also just as far as, um, I don't know, media people. People say Chicago is like a shady city. And uh, like people don't rock with people. People don't show other people love. I don't see it that way. But I wish that it would still be more, um, what's the term? Fluid. Like, still be more fluid, still be more open to, like, you all invited me on this show. I would love to have you all on my show. Like, it's certain things to just make it where people are more open or media is just more, if we're talking about people in media, to where people can, like, see the full picture or see the full potential in each other as opposed to just stuck. Because media seems to be, like, a very competitive field, that's why those type of things don't happen? Yeah. No, definitely. I definitely feel that way. But I also feel like in, in any field you're in or in anything I feel like you have to from a personal like just the way I move and vibe is like whatever's for me is for me Thanks. and I feel like everything happens in a wave everybody has their own lane so if something great happens for somebody it's like that's great like your lane killing it right now like, but I'm gonna just stay in my lane I'm gonna focus on my like what's happening here so as opposed to a lot of people I think sometimes might get caught up in looking at other like the person next to them instead of looking ahead. Mm-hmm. So that is definitely a part of it. People will look at um, some people's success and look at it to compare to their failures. And I'm not saying people, anybody fails. I think everybody just learns lessons. Or everybody's mm-hmm. taught a lesson. They might not learn it, but everybody gets, they get fed that lesson that they needed to learn. Like I've been fed several lessons the hard way. Some the easy way, but a lot the hard way. And you learn them hard, easier that way. So I think the competition is based on people just not having that tunnel vision to stay in their lane. I like it. I agree. I like it. Okay, so I have another question then Mm -hmm. that I just kind of thought of. So being that you are a black woman in media, Mm -hmm. how do you feel about how some outlets portray, like, black women in media, and what do you wish you can change about it? Oh, yeah. So um, one thing that, if we're talking about black women specifically. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm taking it there. Like, no, no, I'm not like, yeah, I don't, I love white women. But I'm talking about black women right now. Oh, well, I think that we are looked at as, like, one thing, a reason, like I said, fell in love with media, looking at all the different stereotypes mm-hmm. of a woman. And I think that a woman, one woman, one like, the one black woman can be multiple things. Like, you don't have to be just this very straightforward, or I always wear my hair straight. I only rock natural. And, like, it's a huge, that's a whole other world there, just yeah. that whole, like, yeah. clash yeah. within our own. But, like, just the way that people see us, the hard thing is, like, we're looked at as sassy in the media we looked at as um just very what's the term prideful when sometimes we can be intimate we can be vulnerable we can be all these things we looked at as always being just like that sex symbol or that voluptuous Mm -hmm. kind of thing but i think that a woman can be all of those things Mm -hmm. i change my hair often like when people don't recognize me i'm like hey and they be like 
Oh, I'm like, yeah, my hair changed. Same. Like, that's the, <laughs> right, like, that's the, always the follow-up. I think that you can be well-spoken and then still, shoot, rock a two-piece on the beach and be sexy, but that doesn't make you a certain type of thing. I think that you can be educated. You can be mothery, motherly. You can be nurturing. You can be sassy. You can be all these things. But I think that black women, we're just viewed at as being these outspoken, degener- not degenerate, but, like, out too outspoken and just I don't know even know how to put it like I just think of it's this Allstate commercial <laughs> like I think of this Allstate commercial where it's the guy he's on the phone with 911 he's like my woman's or she, the woman's on the phone she's like Albert they burned down my she shed oh, I and he's like oh that's awful she's like yep ooh you hear that I'm getting a new she shed she shed mm-hmm. and she was like, really sassy and just over clearly overpowering to the husband in the commercial like this is just the way that I look at things just like advertisements, commercials to see how we're portrayed. And that one scenario is like we are always like the dominant one. Mm-hmm. Why do you feel, you know, black women in media is portrayed that way? Oh, that's the mammy. Yeah. The mulatto. The um what's the the was it the gypsy? What's it called? It's another stereotype, but just those perspectives that was placed on us we know we're not like that because like today we have so many examples of women who are um excelling beyond those stereotypes you have sure let's see well of course beyonce you have um michelle obama you have oprah winfrey you have like we could throw out a bunch of names kelly Rowlands. your um Let's see, what's her, Venus, or Serena Williams, Venus Williams, like all these other women who are portraying things outside of that. And you could tell if you're looking from outside of our culture, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It can make a lot of people uncomfortable. So I think that it's perfectly fine to show that because that's who we are, but it's just to keep that going, keep that elevation of broadening the perspective of black women it's just way more exposure on exactly who we are so people beyond just those um, she share, she shit. Such a she shit. I'm going to do she share, she shit. Like, yeah. great advertising because like, like, it stuck yeah, with me. It stuck, hey, but, I know what you're talking about. He was holding a little water hole. And he was yeah. mad. He I was remember mad. that. He was big mad and she was on that. I know you yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, you know, let's actually jump into the Maven method. Hey. So, I mean, throughout the interview, for those listening, you, we all can tell you have a very great communicational skill. Oh, thank you. So, but what was the actual passion behind the Maven Method, and what is it? Yeah. Okay. So, the Maven Method is a multifaceted training program, media training program for up and coming artists, athletes, performers, or in general, I say talent. So, media training for talent. And the reason I started it was because I've done so many interviews with people. I just shoot just talking to people or whatnot. And I've done a lot of interviews to the point where ev- I can see everybody needs media training. Mm-hmm. Like everybody. I've done so many interviews where, like, yo, this is Revolt TV, bro. bro. Like, this is Diddy, bro. And you really just bombed this whole interview like this? Like, we really came to your show. We interviewed you backstage and you really. Like, I'm, I wouldn't say this to their face, but, like, you really just didn't, you just didn't give a damn. You didn't care at all. And you just blew this opportunity with this outlet. Some people, some people, it's intentional. Some people are just nervous. Like, they're just uncomfortable with, they don't look at it as an um, interview. They look at it as a test. Or they don't look at it as a competition or a conversation. They look at it as, man, you're just drilling me. So I know people have bomb, bombed interviews because they're nervous or because they weren't prepared or they just didn't know how to articulate themselves well enough to fit their brand or they were too caught up in their head but nonetheless regardless of the reason you bombed this opportunity to build your brand and expand your audience so I started it to help alleviate that stress and I figured it was a way for me to combine all of my media maven antidotes into one so I talk about like everything from FCC policy which doesn't get trickled down to artists unless they get signed to a record label and they go through media training with the, whoever their rep is. A lot of artists aren't going to know anything about FCC. Mm-hmm. They're not going to know that you know, if you go on this radio show, on this TV show, and you say this one word or this one phrase, like, bro, you boot it. Like, they don't want you no more. Like, you, you just cost them money. You just like They're going to have to pay a fine to the FCC. Mm-hmm. So just breaking down all of the different um, pieces of information within that, we talk about just from a public relations standpoint, uh, just having a plan. Like, how do you have a plan? How do you build a plan? How do you know? Like, how do you know if you're pitchable? 
Because a lot of times, if, shoot, honestly, like, if you're hot enough, the media is going to come to you. That's but true. then what do you do? That's but true. if you're trying to reach the media, how do you do that? We talk about just general communication, um, articulating your words or um, body language, just being mindful of how, like, if, like, yes, the radio, so most radio, well, nowadays most radio stations are recorded like this. Mm -hmm. But before, it's like you could come in kind of really anyway. Man, with jogging (laughs) pants and flip flops. And you could just do the whole thing like this. And you be they thinking you in the club kicking. Right, exactly. You know, actually, I want to bounce off that Mm -hmm. and um, listening. You know, have have you worked with any artists? Is this? I mean, mm-hmm. is the I know the media Maven. I mean, the media mm-hmm. ma- the Maven method is for <laughs> everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you get more artists that come your way? Um, and also, have you worked with any artists to like push them forward? I have done very like in small pieces in small ways. So from like I, sometimes I'll just be in the studio. Or, like somebody will hit me and be like, "Yeah, they're in the studio. You just gonna come kick it?" Yeah, sure. And I'll just like give my tidbits on a song, or I don't know. Ooh, way back. This is way back when I might have still been in school. I might have been here for summer break, but I was would just be hanging out or um, like shadowing um, Merck from Complex Twenty Ten. Shout, Shout, Shout out to Merck. Merck. So I would be just kicking it over there. And I remember that summer for that time, what was it, Z Money was um, would be in the studio and be working with them. So we would go to the different shows, and I would just tell them, like, yeah, like I think that was really dope that you did that, but when you did this transition, I would have did it differently. I would have did it this way. So I've always just had the personality to just talk with artists, like before and after interviews, because I just want to make them feel comfortable, like I said. So just not even just to make them feel comfortable, but it, but it makes for a better interview. It makes for a more genuine interpersonal conversation so and then just try to keep in touch post interview um i've interviewed some artists where it's like man i'm trying to get in contact with them to this day to get in contact with them to work with them to try to do some more media training but i've done two sessions of the class so far i did one in october or no one in august and one in october and it was a huge difference between those i think we're going to be able to get one in this month but if not I didn't, I, I didn't plan the trip to China. Just It kind of just it snuck sprung up. up on you. Yeah, it just sprung up. Like, hey, let's go to China. All right. All right, like, right, sure. Let's go with it. <laughs> and, um, so November might have gotten away from me, but it's continuing to grow. And it's not just for artists, but like, mm-hmm. or not just for the talent. So not just athletes, singers, rappers, models, actors. But they, I've had different PR professionals attend or different I managers go. attend. I'm, I'm like, I'm yeah. media <laughs> personality. <laughs> one, shoot. Oh, hey, I will let y'all know. I will definitely let you know. But like, also like um, studio managers, artist management. Because they're the ones who are working with the artists. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones who understand, like, yo, you need this. And a lot of artists don't necessarily look at it that way. A lot of people look at it as, man, I'll just go there and talk and be myself. Okay, well, how productive is that going to be? <laughs> <laughs> like, it'd be it's going to be cool and all. Definitely be yourself. But how can you make it more exclusive and more genuine and more eye-opening to who you are? How do you handle an interview that's like... Not bad. Yeah. How do you <laughs> handle that and still keep yourself like Man, like I think I'm an avid believer in laughing at yourself. So just like I've done interviews where it's just dry. Like I mean Popeye's biscuit dry. <laughs> just Yeah. And you just sitting there and you just like I can't wait for this yeah. to be over. Yeah, but it's like, but I also enjoy awkward moments. Like, I know if someone's being driving, like, bro, you just make this so awkward. I'm not going to say it, but I can laugh at it like, whoop. Like, that's my like, <laughs> <laughs> whoop. Well, yeah. So you do like honey on your biscuits. <laughs> okay. All right. That's like, just cool. to be, yeah, like, just to be just genuine. <laughs> like, okay, we not. <laughs> I mean, it's just like some things, like. An interview with my probably this might have been one of the funnest, but also awkward, but then enjoyable interviews was with um, Mark Curry. You all remember hanging with Mr. Cooper? Yeah. Yeah, Mark Curry. We just shoot busted out playing slides in the middle of the interview. That's yeah. entertaining. That's fun. Yeah. Was you interviewing while you was playing slides? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, because we said it was a question. Like it just got down to the point of the questions being like, yeah. So what's your favorite color? Oh, green. Why? Because it's money. All right. Cool. Okay. So, did your grandma ever cut your hair? Like, it's just turned into that kind of thing. It's like, okay, yeah, I know I'm not going to get any solid, real answers. So, we're just about to have fun. 
and just try to meet meet them at their at that level. I mean, you mm. still created content though. Yeah, yeah it was exactly. Different. Yeah, it was it was very different, <laughs> very different. But um, I will also say it also depends on like, are they having fun? Are they in a negative place? And then it's kind of like still just meet them where they are. Like whether they feeling real low down here, just meet them there. But still continuing the interview, I haven't had any necessarily rude people come where I've had to like check somebody. But I've checked people, but just maybe not okay. In a professional way, yeah. right? Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, that's I the thing, like a way it works. You just still mm-hmm. got to check people just like, okay, look, I understand. You have to do your job, but I have to do my job. So, right. Niggas, but you've it been, just depends. But meet them at their level, wherever you got meet them at their, meet level. Them at their level. You've been around for a very, you've been around, How actually, how long have you been within the Chicago media industry? Five years. Five years. It seemed like longer. <laughs> yeah, just five. Only five. Yeah, I mean, I went to school in Missouri, so it was like I was gone except for in the summer. Jeez. Like, I would be back in the summer. And, yeah, it started primarily with Revolt in 2014 and just been trying to go ham ever since. So. Wow. I mean, but within the five years, uh, I've seen your name pop up several times. I've seen some of your interviews. Oh, thank you. Um, and then also, I know for sh- I, I know that you also landed on a podcast, mm-hmm. Three Piece. Yep. So how did how did that situation come about? It was you and two other co-hosts, mm-hmm. if yeah, I'm not mistaken. So, so how did that situation come about? Sean Grant and Jamal Anderson, Deshaun and I, and you mentioned the source. So yeah, shout out to him, man. He doesn't um, was he doesn't um, necessarily promote it, but he is actually the executive or senior editor at the source. So shout out to him. Yeah, I just put you out. <laughs> Boom. But um, we went to high school together okay. and Mizzou, and then we met Jamal at Mizzou. Uh, me and Deshaun are from here. Jamal moved here from Houston, and one of this this other guy we know named Ryan, who um, also went to Mizzou with us, he had an idea for a podcast along with this guy named Jake, who is the producer of it, and they just wanted the three of us to do a podcast show together, and they created a station called um, Mount Sauce Radio, so... We were just, I remember chopping it up one day, like, man, okay, well, everybody's down. Okay, we're in a room just like this. Like, okay, we got it? Okay, well, what's her name going to be? I'm like, we could be the three-piece on Mount <laughs> Sauce Radio. And when you say three-piece, I think of the, I think the of Chicago three. group. The, you think oh, of yeah. chicken, I think of three-piece. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I think of. Yeah. Oh, you funny. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> man, we people have, because we hosted an event together, and somebody was like, yeah, all right, y'all. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It was um like a, it was a gaming event, and the person introducing us on the mic was. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but he would like. I just remember seeing everybody's face. It was like, okay, y'all. All right, up next we got three piece. <laughs> I tell you, the rooms like looking like they looking around like, like they they didn't see. <laughs> Like, it would have just been so random. Like, yo, no. Like, we are the three piece. <laughs> the three piece. Like, we ain't got no singing for y'all. We ain't got none of that. We ain't got none of that for you right now. But, yeah, but people have mistaken it that way. But, yeah. Because you we, talk about three pieces look, look, in a biscuit. <laughs> I mean, but that, that. You can keep the biscuit. Unless you saw, I mean, then you, that goes into, like, the logo was a bottle of mouth sauce. And it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Um, I mean,. As far as podcasting, how do you mm-hmm. see podcasting now? And how, mm-hmm. what future do you see for podcasting? I wish I would have started it a long time ago. Like, there are so many people who have capitalized extremely mm-hmm. on podcasting. There are podcast awards now. And as far as the future, I see them getting bigger. Like I said, um, magazine and print is dying, almost deceased. And TV is next. So podcasts are going to be those Platforms to replace the next form of content because mm-hmm. people are um, like one thing with certain networks is that they were doing long form or short form like just one like just like one hit or quit is one like this segment this listening party this show so and so did this and going out and doing interviews and all this stuff for that well people are moving more towards long form so like okay we have this one set recipe and we're just gonna drop in different things to make it different each week or every day. So similar to podcast, it's the same thing. You can do it yourself and just build up your brand. I think that they're going to just keep growing and the long, people who have been in it the longest have like clearly the upper surpassed. Hand. Yeah. They got the upper hand. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I see the same thing, but one thing I, I want to hear from you is 
you know, podcasting to me is saturated. Do I mean, do you feel that way at all? Do you feel like uh, the podcast, I'm going to say this. Do you feel like the podcast industry is turning into like the rap industry where it's just so many new, which is not a bad thing because it's helping the industry move forward. Yeah. But do you ever feel that way that podcasting is, you know, a little oversaturated? I think that there are, like you said, like rappers, like they everywhere, <laughs> like literally everywhere. I stepped on one coming in, but um, <laughs> like it was um, like basically <laughs> that sounded like shade. But y'all, I guarantee there were no rappers when I walked in the building. Okay, but um, I think that a good way to look at that is a cool little metaphor. Another metaphor from my lash tech. I haven't seen her Shout in a while. Shout out to the last text. I don't know if you can see, but I haven't seen her in a while, so my lash is not as present right now. You but, um, hooked up in China? No. no but I, I forgot that, that they... <laughs> I'm like, no. no. <laughs> I mean, know. I'm not talking about the lash. I'm talking about you got to sit on the table and they put a lash on individually. And I just didn't have the time, the patience, or the safety concern for that in China. But... <laughs> No, but on my last text, she said that she was about to start doing lashes. She said before she decided to go on and do lashes, she had, like, doubts. She said she was talking to her mom. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Everybody's doing lashes, which you know is true. Mm-hmm. Everybody and their mama doing lashes now. So, so I don't know if I really, if it's worth going out to buy the bid and the materials and the equipment to do it. But because it's just so saturated. And the mom said, well, no. Anytime that you feel like you're doing something that everyone else is doing, Go to the grocery store and go to the bread aisle. Mm. What's so cool about the bread aisle? It's the only aisle in the whole store that is nothing but bread on both sides. Like, it's just all these bread. different types of bread. Every Like, this is the only aisle in the store. They it ain't no jam. <laughs> ain't no jelly. Ain't no butter. It's just all bread. bread. And the cool thing is that no matter what, it's all bread. But there is an audience for and There is a market and there are fans of every single type of bread. Like my household growing up, we had all the bread. I liked Hawaiian bread. My dad liked white bread. My mama only liked wheat bread because it was healthier. So it was like all we would have all sorts of bread in the house all the time. Or even milk. I like almond milk. Some people like whole milk. Somebody else only likes 2% milk or whatever. Mm-hmm. And no matter what, just know that going back to your lane, there is somebody who's going to, there's somebody, there's somebody everywhere who only buys one type of bread. Mm-hmm. No matter how many pieces of bread or types of bread there are, yep, that's me. so when it comes to like podcasts and personalities or whatever you want to do, whatever you're trying to like take and like whatever industry you're trying to penetrate into, then the people who are going to come and listen, they're going to come and listen no right. matter what. Yeah, so like if they're a fan, they're a fan. And like why you might be doing this, but so and so's doing it similar. Your day ones, as long as you keep it up, they're not going to go. That's just taking up more time. Like, man, now I got to get caught up on this. Like, have you ever, like, seen some new shows come out? Like, oh, that looks so good. I just yeah. don't have time to mm-hmm. get in to it. But it's like, but I got time for this. So just when it comes to podcasts, even artists, I think they're probably more saturated than anything oh, yeah, right now. Yeah. But when it comes to any industry, just look at it as bread, bread out. I like, like that. What yeah, yeast like that. are you? <laughs> <You're a rapper. laughs> I, I, I thought about rapping. I'm going to go do this. I got my mixtape tomorrow. You don't. You know, <laughs> you know, also, you know, with podcasting, there's a lot of big names jumping in, jumping on oh, board. Yeah. Too, uh, you know, you got Ti Expedition, which thing. I actually I, I, I like, like it. it. Oh, yeah, I watch I like it. it uh, I want to hear name? him talk about what he recently talked about, but we could talk about that later. But his he, daughter, yes, <laughs> and the high. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's going to talk about it on his podcast. He has to. Like, he, he has will. to address it. Yeah, like, he if will. he has any PR ad, or, like PR rep, he, he like is. bro, you got to say something. And if you're going to say it, you might as well say it on your platform and bring listeners to your platform. Yeah, and don't go do no interviews about it. Cause you know everybody gonna tune in. Hell, I'm gonna tune in. I haven't watched the episode of it, but I'm gonna watch. She gonna it watch that one if he <laughs> come with a response. You watch so. it. Watch the Young Thug one and the Snitch one. Those and the Charlamagne God one. Those. Okay. Oh, speak to you. Charlamagne got a podcast. Joe Budden. Uh, Joe, Joe Budden. Budden. I mean, it's like Joe. he sparked it off with to Fat mm-hmm. Joe. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Nori. No, uh, uh, yeah. No, uh, Swiss Beats. Drink Champs. It's like so mm-hmm. many people I'm have on. a so many people with names have a podcast. Them the ones I don't like. Yeah, y'all aren't making enough money. <laughs> but it, that's what I was gonna say. Do you feel like that's gonna overshadow platforms such as like Three Piece? Uh, the Three Piece. Both. The Three Piece. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you know, with those people being a major. 
I guess, influencers, do you feel like that's going to overshadow those that's been doing it and put that same work ethic in? Um, not necessarily. Because similar to how social media came in, killing the game with, um, like, you getting, like, as a, what's the term, as a, like, audience member, you being able to get more of an insight into who that person is. A podcast is similar. A podcast is where now I have an actual platform to, and, and so much uninterrupted time to show my perspective on certain things. So, yeah, more people might listen because you're, like, this elevated figure. So, some for some reason, people might care more about your perspective. But everybody has their own perspective. Like, just because they feel this way about something doesn't mean that you're going to feel that way. And like I said, if somebody, if you're able to capture the attention of somebody based on what you know and what you talk about and how you feel and the way you promote it, then people are going to still come rock with you no matter what. It's just like finding that, I don't know, finding that recipe to get the attention. Like, that's the thing. It's getting the, it's every, like every, that's another reason why I got in the media. Like, every successful person, and I just wanted to interview people and talk to people, is because every single successful person is a recipe to the, their success. Thanks. But the kicker but the kicker is not one person has the same exact recipe. Mm. So you've got to be able to cook it up by yourself. And But it ain't no, ain't no cookbook. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just figuring that out. And that's always part of the finesse. You yeah. have a long, long resume. Mm. I want to know, at a all the things you do, you've done. What is the f- most fun you had, and what what and what like feel? What what did you have the most fun in? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Hmm. I don't know. It might have been. What was it? I'm gonna mess up the name of it. But I think it was like Freak Fest. Freaky Fest. I don't know. What was that? It was you like Halloween. Me, why you look at me like I should know? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were looking at you too. Like you know, you heard about this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay, it's coming off real weird. No, but it's like a Halloween fest, like Freaky Friday festival, or I don't know. It was a music festival. I don't know if they still do it, but Freak Nick. No, no. no. Oh, that's way no. too young for that. Oh my bad. <laughs> well, it was a, it's a music festival here, similar to Pitchfork and Riot Fest, but it was called it, okay. Let's not call it Freak Fest because that sounds freaky. But it was a Halloween themed music festival And I just remember covering it And there were just so many cool, weird, quirky things happening From just the interviews to doing some crowd interviews Like there was this guy dressed as a Tootsie Roll Hitting the Tootsie Roll And passing out Tootsie Rolls And I'm just like, that's so weird But it's little dope. things, like, it was funny It was just really funny to, Like It was ironic to yeah, if you would have saw it, you, I'm sure you could imagine. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I, I, mean, I, I mean, you're like, yeah, I should do that. I, should do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can see myself doing a Tootsie Roll with a yeah. Tootsie Roll outfit, passing out Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> <laughs> but the vibe of the whole festival, like every single artist we interviewed that day, just had the same vibe, same vibe, or for the whole festival, like just. They were everybody was tweaked out. Like everybody just walking into the room. Like you, if you only knew what you had to walk through to get to the back or get to the green rooms. Everybody's walking in like, bro, <laughs> you see that? Yeah. And then like now it makes for a good interview because they're already, yep. mm-hmm. already like warmed up to being chill and being cool. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it was question. interesting, and that might not even be the right answer to the question, but no, that's no, the one no, that no, came no, to no. my you mind. Had the, you had fun doing that. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was. I love tweaked out situations and ironic situations or random situations because it's all about how you respond. That's true. And keep you on your toes. Also, I was in pr- improv. I was in the improv team at school, so there's improv in the Maven Method. So I'm gonna play a few games to get people on their toes and thinking on their feet. Because a lot of times in interviews, that's what you have to. That's what you have to do. You have to have an answer for everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even if it's not the right back. one. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> now, I mean, break down the Maven method again for those mm-hmm. listening. And if I know you said you may do something this month, but if not this month, let them know when they can expect mm-hmm. another live. You know, see you in person. Yeah. All right. So the next Maven method, I don't have a date for it, but. The Maven Method is a media training course for up-and-coming artists, singers, rappers, athletes, performers, or even managers, PR reps, or anybody who works within the entertainment industry to come check it out. We're going to talk about FCC policy, body language. We're going to do some improv games, everything to get you prepared for your next media interview or interaction. So 
visit my website, PortiaKing.com, or I'm at Portia King Media on all social media platforms. And just go there to stay in tune for when the next session will be. You should be there.